We sure have been talking about a lot of Canadian shows lately, haven't we? First Nirvana the band the show, then Gary and his demons, and now this. And honestly, if this show isn't proof that not all Canadian cartoons are garbage, then I don't know what is. This is Moville Mysteries, a Patreon raffle review, suggested by the wonderful Sophie Burgers. And if you'd like your Patreon raffle idea to become a reality, then consider donating to the Media Mementos Patreon. Link in the description below. So now it's time to talk about Moville Mysteries. What is this? It's a very surreal Canadian cartoon that was described to me as the predecessor to Gravity Falls. And yes, I can definitely see that in there, albeit with some other influences thrown in, but I'll get to that shortly. The series follows this short, ugly-looking kid named Mo, and he is obsessed with the paranormal. Anything that's slightly out of the ordinary, he has to know about it and find it. He drags along his two friends that, while not as interested in the paranormal as he is, definitely help out. Strange things happen in this town all the time too, which means that these three are always itching for a new adventure. So is that the extent of it? Nope. Because this is Gary and his demons done right. It tries to do everything, but succeeds. What do I mean by this? Well, it's a supernatural show, full of monsters and ancient items and curses, each one containing an action-packed adventure and understanding the lore behind each and every thing. Not only that, but it's also a slice-of-life show. The series primarily takes place in the town, so there's a lot of hanging out and talking and just chilling out between the three characters. And sometimes they're not even the main focus, so it's able to have a lot of action and understanding the paranormal while also being a slice of life series, something kind of like Hey Arnold or Ed and Nettie. It doesn't hurt that the characters are all very likable. Mo is my favorite character of the bunch. It doesn't hurt that he's voiced by Frankie Muniz, he does a great job as always, but this guy is radiating with excitement and charisma. Whenever he sees something that's slightly unusual, he drops everything to go get it and understand everything about it. Solving the mystery, defeating the monster, whatever it takes for him to have an adventure this week. You know what makes this extra special? Main characters are usually pretty hard to get right, especially in children's media. Like in Harry Potter, whose favorite character is Harry? While I'm sure there's some people out there, I'll tell you, that's very few and far between. In things like these, the side characters tend to steal the show. Again, with Harry Potter, usually people's favorite characters are Snape, Dumbledore, McGonagall, Voldemort, or even Gilderoy Lockhart, but rarely ever is it Harry. This is because, in all honesty, the main character is usually one of the weakest, being there to be the main character, not having as much personality or flair as those around them. They're the ones that further the story, but don't necessarily have the most redeeming qualities or interesting traits. But Mo is not that. The best I can describe him is getting Dib from Invader Zim and Dipper from Gravity Falls and putting them in a blender. That's this guy. He's got all the insanity of Dib, but also the good-hearted nature of Dipper. Now let's talk about his friends. Mimi is basically Sam from Danny Phantom done right. She's the straight man or straight woman of the group, being the most level-headed and the one to voice concerns when things are going too far. You know, like a lot of the female leads in shows like this, but she has an edge. It's that she's not really all that interested in the paranormal. She more has interest in going through life and making sure people don't act like idiots. Well, yes, she does have an interest in it. It's nowhere near as much as her two friends. But that's not to say she isn't to help. She absolutely is. Whenever something goes wrong, she's not gonna rest until it gets fixed. Although she does exchange snarky comments and complaints here and there. But at least she's not obnoxious like Sam. And rounding out our main cast is Hitch, voiced by Dan... Uh, uh, the guy who plays Jeff on Total Drama. He's the goofy comic relief guy, but he's not obnoxious, thankfully. And I can't tell you how relieved I am to see that. Trust me, not every lovable comedic sidekick is an Ed from Ed and Nettie. There's a lot of Jake Spider monkeys and Rodney squirrels out there, let me tell you. But Hitch isn't that. He does have an interest in the paranormal, probably a bit more than Mimi, but definitely not as much as Mo. But he's the least serious about it. 
He's goofy, he's weird, and he kinda likes to do his own thing. He's a bit of a dude bro, but he's not a bad guy. He does mean well, even if he's not really all there in the head. You know what one of the most annoying things about kids shows is? When they stop the plot entirely to have the wacky comedic sidekick say something loud and stupid or low random. Just take a look at all the new Fairly Odd Parents episodes that have been coming out over the past few years, and you'll see exactly what I mean. With Hitch, they don't do that. Either his humor blends into the story, or it comes in at the right time. Another thing that I like about him is that they don't overuse him. It's not like the Minions or Mater, where he's a little bit prominent at first, but then he takes over the show. No, they keep him exactly where they need him to be. And this is one of those shows that I always love to talk about where the characters are very well developed, so much so that you can put them in any situation and the scenarios would write themselves. And boy, do they really push that here in Moville Mysteries. The first episode is about the main trio being upset that their school sports teams never win anything. Until they unearth this ancient legend about a guy who used to go to the school and was the best player of every sport known to man, including cow milking. Word has it that he got all of his luck and power from a magic jockstrap. And that's the whole focus of the first episode, them trying to get the jockstrap and then seeing what terrible powers its curse brings. And if you think that's the outlier, oh no no no. Every single episode of the show brings that level of creativity, not stopping for an instant. This really does feel like its own little world. Helping with that is the animation. Look at this. It's a very interesting style full of bizarre colors and strange shapes. It's like a mix between Invader Zim, Klasky Kupo, and Ed and Eddie. The backgrounds are all dark and gloomy like something out of Tim Burton, but the main characters are so light and vibrant. Provides a nice contrast. And all the designs of the beasts and weird things they encounter are very interesting. It's definitely more of an artistic, stylized look, and yeah, it's very reminiscent to, again, Invader Zim and Ed and Eddie, especially when people scream. There's a cheerleader in the first episode especially that feels right out of Invader Zim. But it never once feels like a ripoff, it just feels like it's taking inspiration. Making its own thing by taking influences from other places. So, how did this show do in the ratings? I guess not very well, given the fact that it only lasted one 26 episode season. Or two seasons with 13 episodes each. I can't really tell, I'm seeing conflicting sources for each. But it didn't last long at all, lasting less than a year. And clearly, YTV, the network that aired this, doesn't really care too much about it because you can find just about every episode in its entirety online. Which, for the record, is how I found it. While I am glad that this really well-made show is free to watch for anyone to see, I am disappointed that no one really talks about it. There's a lot of these shows that people seem to love from back in this time, like Fillmore or The Weekenders, things that mainstream audiences don't ever acknowledge. These weren't some fly-by-night shows that tried to be loud and aggressive, capturing all the money in the children's pockets before vanishing into the night, never to be seen or even remembered again. These were works of art. People cared about them. They wanted them to be the very best shows that they possibly could be. But whether it be through network interference, or lack of a proper audience, or both, they didn't last. And it seems like Movil Mysteries is exactly one of these. And I'm very happy that this got recommended to me, because I never would have found out about this show beforehand. Do I recommend it? Sure thing. If you're even slightly interested, or you like Invader Zim, Ed and Eddie, or weird things in general, I suggest you check it out. This would probably be right up your alley. If not, eh, it's worth a shot at least. Everything's free on YouTube, so it's not going to cost you anything, right? Sad to say, this series never really got the attention it deserves, but I can say that Movo Mysteries is definitely worth your time. Well folks, thanks for watching the video. Have you seen this show before? If so, what'd you think of it? And if not, are you interested in checking it out? Comment below and let me know because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you guys next time.